we're delighted to be together again. And I'm hopeful that you would have viewed the first two parts of this presentation, uh, Stewardship of Financial Resource. In the first part, we spoke to the issue of tithing as a biblical requirement. And um, in the second part, we spoke to tithing in particular as a New Testament biblical requirement. And so in this part three, we want to talk to the issue of tithing in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Again, we want to encourage you to make this a prayerful matter as you view this video. So let's bow our heads and close our eyes for prayer. Father, we just say thanks to you for your love towards us. Thanks, dear God, for the multitude of your blessings. And again, for the privilege we have to view another part of this very important presentation, Stewardship of Financial Resource. As we look at the issue of tithing in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, we pray again, Lord, that you would be with us, that you would be present in a special way, Lord, and be with each viewer this time. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Tithing in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Well, let's face a couple of realities. This church started in earnest in 1844. Some people use October 22, and there are other people who use that day in December when a small group of persons were engaged in a prayer meeting and God gave to Ellen G. White her first vision uh, as, as it relates to leading the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Whether you use October or you use December, it started in 1844. When this church started in 1844, it was not a church. It was just a band of people, a small group of young people, I must say, whose concern was not about building a church, was not about forming an organization, and therefore, a financial structure was the furthest thing from their minds. In their minds, they were thinking that Jesus is coming soon. Our business is to let everybody know, friends and neighbors and co-workers and family and strangers and the man in the street, everybody. Just let people know that Jesus is coming soon. It's time to get ready. But the days turned into weeks, and the weeks turned into months, and now years was rolling by. And the group itself was getting bigger as people embraced the teachings that they were now sharing with them. Preachers were going out on the streets and telling people by day, Jesus is coming soon, and by night they were in a hall somewhere telling people that these, this is the evidence that Jesus is coming soon. So that for the first 15 years of the existence of the church, there was not a financial plan. They were just operating uh, as a group. They were operating with the main doctrine being the second coming of Jesus. But there was no financial plan. There was no organized system. There was no church. Uh, there was no name given to, to, to the church. So that for the first 15 years, they didn't have any financial plan. But the church, the, 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 the work was sustained. How was the work sustained for those 15 years? It was sustained by the support of personal uh, sacrifice and donations made by friends of the church. Personal sacrifice. And... Uh, the ministers were rewarded for their work by the hospitality and generosity of church members. Yeah, that's how ministers were sustained in those days. So the, 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 the printing work of the church in those early days were funded, or was rather funded, by the work of James White as he engaged in manual labor. But in 1859... The leadership of, the, of this group, not yet a church, the leadership came together and determined that there was no way they could continue to operate like this. 
by, by, by just, uh, you know, just benefiting from goodwill and, and charity. And so they had to find a financial structure that they were going to adopt that was going to work. And so in 1859, the leadership of the church commissioned a John Nevin Andrews Bible study group to engage in a Bible study topic. What was the topic? Discover what was God's revealed biblical will for funding the support of the church. How was God going to support the church? How, how, how did it happen? What does the Bible have to say about the subject? The members of that Bible study group, John N. Andrews, James White, and a person less known, a gentleman by the name of Joseph Frisbee. Three persons engaged in a three-month Bible study, and after three months, um, returned to the leadership of the church and reported that God's biblical means for supporting the church and its ministry were three. Tithing, free will offerings, and giving from one's accumulated asset. That was, the, that, that was the finding. And so immediately in 1859, we started what was then called the personal giving plan. In 1859, this plan was adopted. What was the plan? The plan... The offering plan, I know we're talking about tithing in the, in, in, in the Adventist church, but the offering plan, that's the foundation. Each brother between the ages of 18 and 60, that was considered to be an adult, were asked to give uh, 5 cents to 25 cents every week. And each sister, because most of them were housewives of the same age, were now asked to give between 2 cents to 10 cents every week for the advancement of the work of God. And if you had property, you were required to give between one cent and five cents for every hundred dollar worth of property that you had. Brothers and sisters, that was the first financial plan in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. In the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The issue of tithing never came to focus until 1876. By the way, I should observe um, that is, it was in 1874 that the church officially sent its first foreign missionary out of the USA in the person of John Nevin Andrews. He went to Switzerland and developed the work there. There were people who would have done it unofficially, um, but he was the first official missionary leaving the United States, commissioned by the church, to engage in missionary endeavors. So in 1876, the tithing system was formally adopted by the World Church. Now, what to do with the tithe? A very important question. If I'm required to bring my tithe into the church, then why is there the need for a conference, a union, a division, a general conference. That, that, that question came up in the first um, presentation in this three-part series on financial resource. And I did promise you that we were going to answer that at some point in uh, this series of presentations. And the answer is easy. For the purpose of equity. Yes, for the purpose of equity. So, for example, you have um, two ministers, and you have one minister working in a rural community with two small, financially struggling churches, uh, and, and you have another minister um, functioning in a city church where all the professionals are, and where all the, um, the, the, the persons who, ha who are of big monies are, are members. If we leave the congregation to fund the minister, then you can appreciate that the minister at, in the rural church will not just be of lesser status, but will get less as a remuneration. And the pastor in the city church can live it up. He can buy a yacht, he can buy his own jet, he can live in a fancy house, he can drive a fancy car, 
and so one is living at the top of the economic ladder while the other is living at the very bottom of the economic ladder. And, and, and if you have a congregational system, that may happen. Because we have a conference, all the tithes received in the local churches um, are brought to the conference office. And the conference office now makes distribution as it relates to remuneration. And whether he's a city pastor or a rural community pastor, he will get the same salary. So for the purpose of equity. Secondly, we have one Seventh-day Adventist church, and I'm happy to tell you that. We have one Seventh-day Adventist church. We do not have a Seventh-day Adventist church here, there, and everywhere. Well, we may have a Seventh-day Adventist church here, there, and everywhere. But we have one Seventh-day Adventist church. The church that you belong to is the Seventh-day Adventist Church in your location. But it's one Seventh-day Adventist Church. The location makes a difference. Some people would, 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 would rather to choose to call it by a particular name, Pioneer or First Church or whatever name you want to call it, but we belong to one Seventh-day Adventist Church. The structure goes up from the local member to the local family to the local congregation to the local um, region or, or, or zone, to the local conference, to the local union, to the local division, and then to the general conference. But in truth and in fact, we have one Seventh-day Adventist church. And then in addition to one Seventh-day Adventist church, we have one Seventh-day Adventist church with one mission. Our one mission, brothers and sisters, is to carry the gospel to all the world. And like the young people like to say in the AY, um, in the AY pledge, it is about carrying the gospel to all the world in my generation. I do the best that I can. Um, so we want to know, do you know what is done with the tithe? Some people say to me, Pastor, I don't want to know. God has blessed me I respond to the blessings of God by doing what God has required me to do. And God says, bring the tithe and the offering. And I bring the tithe and the offering. And I put it into the offering plate at the church. I turn my back. God has given me a responsibility to bring it. God has given others a responsibility to manage it. I don't want to know. And then there are other people who ask, what do you do with the tithe? Please account. What is done with the tithe? Well, in relation to the South Caribbean Conference, and that is particularly in relation to Trinidad, the, 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 the tithe is received at the local church, and from the local church, the tithe now goes to the local conference. So it goes to the local conference, and when it gets to the local conference, the tithe is now received by the treasurer, and there are certain divisions that must be made. A portion of your tithe goes to the Inter-America Division. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. A portion of that tithe goes to the Caribbean Union. And again, we'll talk a little bit about that in a, in a moment. A portion of your tithe also goes to supporting the work of the University of the Southern Caribbean. A portion of your tithe goes to supporting Christian education. Do you know, brothers and sisters, that in the South Caribbean Conference in Trinidad, we have, um, well, the University of the Southern Caribbean is a Caribbean university. So technically, we are part owner of that. Thank God for that. That's our university. Praise God. We also have three privately funded secondary schools. We have 12 primary schools. The five of them are state-aided, and seven of them are fully privately funded. And there we have a, a, a number of uh, early childhood centers, education centers, and, um, and your tithe helps to fund the church at all of those levels as it relates to Christian education. Then we have a number of persons who are engaged in publishing work. They receive, 
and they purchased rather, let me not say receive, sorry for using the wrong word there guys, and they purchased Christian literature at Ayadpa's office um, in St. Augustine, and they go out on the streets into the homes and they sell those truth-filled literature. And men and women, by reading them, can understand a little better about the work of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And so a portion of your tithe assists the, work, the publishing work in the conference. A portion of your tithe also goes to the communication department. They must buy technical equipment and stuff like that. And a portion, a small portion, is, goes to the communication department. Then there's that portion that goes into a retirement fund. A retirement fund for our workers when they retire, they have a little pittance to, to, to look forward to. And then the rest of it goes to um, funding the operations, departmental work, and workers' wages and salaries. To a large extent, that is what is done with your tithe. One of these days, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about really how, what percentages are used in various ways. So I did tell you we're going to talk a little bit more about the Caribbean Union. So the Caribbean Union is made up of islands in the southern Caribbean from uh, the British Virgin Islands in the north to Suriname and Guyana in the south. And in that space we have, um, we have, let me make sure, we have six conferences. We have Guyana, we have uh, um, South Caribbean Conference, which is Trinidad. We have Grenada Conference, East Caribbean Conference, North Caribbean Conference, and the South Leeward Conference. Those are the six conferences in the Caribbean Union. And uh, we also have four missions, uh, Suriname, Tobago, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent. And the Caribbean Union also manages three institutions, the University of the Southern Caribbean, um, the Community Hospital, and Davis Memorial Hospital in Guyana. That's what the Caribbean Union does. It administers the work in those various fields. Somebody tell me it's about 25 countries in all. So you have 25 countries where work is taking place and the Caribbean Union sits in the crow's nest and supervises the work in the Southern Caribbean as it relates to uh, its mission, fulfilling its mission. And so that's what is done in the Caribbean Union. So we move over now to the Inter-America Division. The Inter-America Division uh, incorporates a number of countries in Latin America and the Caribbean, and its head office is in Miami in the United States of America. And the Inter-America Division um, receives a portion of the tithe that every member gives. And that's a great thing, because in this church, every member is important. And so the Caribbean Union, and rather the Inter-America Division, will receive uh, and that portion uh, that policy allows, and they would now um, give a portion of that, which they get from all the various fields, they would give a portion of that to the General Conference. They will also use a substantial part of that, more than 50% of that, and what they receive will go to advancing mission, supporting evangelism. That priority magazine that you purchase for the benefit of doing missionary work, uh, that is printed and, 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 and shared with us at, at subsidized cost uh, because the Inter-America Division uses a part of the monies that goes to them for the purpose of funding that project. And then the Book of the Year, for, for the last 10 or more years, we have had the Book of the Year where we make at a cheaper rate available a special book every year. And then a small percentage of what is sent to the Inter-America Division is used for the purpose of operations, departmental expenditure, and workers' wages and salaries. Neither the Caribbean Union uh, nor the Inter-America Division has uh, a bigger staff as the, maybe the South Caribbean Conference would, or maybe another field in local feel in the, in, in the Union. All right, in the Inter-America Division, we have 24 unions. Uh, some of them are Spanish-speaking, some of them are English-speaking, and I think we have two French-speaking unions. 
in the Inter-America division, some of the unions will include places like Cuba. Yeah, we do have work established in Cuba. In Haiti, somebody says the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, it's competing to be the poorest country in the world. But the work is very well established in Haiti. In Venezuela, where there's an economic issue now, the work continues. Yes, we have five English-speaking unions in the Inter-America Division. And then we move from Inter-America and we go to the General Conference. The General Conference is the whole world put together, now divided into 13 divisions. So 13 subsets make up the General Conference. At the last General Conference session uh, that was concluded just last month, well, let me, say, let me say in the month of June, it was revealed that the United Nations report that we have 229 countries, as far as the United Nations are concerned, we have 229 countries in the world. And of those 229 countries, the Seventh-day Adventist Church has established work in 214 of those countries. So as far as taking the gospel to all in the world is concerned, we have been moving uh, fast and furious to take the gospel to every person until the last person, to every home until the last home, to every street until the last street, to every neighborhood until the last neighborhood, to every town until the last town, to every city until the last city, to every country until the last country, to every continent until the last continent. So we have 13 divisions in the world. And the General Conference is about supporting mission. The most important thing that the, the General Conference does with monies received from the division and monies received from anywhere else is the work of carrying the gospel to all the world. So they engage in mission and evangelism. There, is an administra there are administrative costs that is uh, related to those mission work, uh, those bits of mission work. They must pay workers uh, wages and salaries, and they may have other expenses. But generally, that's where the, how the general conference would spend the resources that comes to them. I just thought I'd share with you uh, some world mission projects, because sometimes we hear uh, about mission and the first thing we think about is planting a church in an unentered area. Brothers and sisters, there are places in the world where we are not authorized to plant a church. There are places in the world where you can't walk the street with a Bible in your hands. There are places in the world where you are not going to get permission to build a church. There are places in the world where you can't do wayside preaching. There are places in the world where you can't do uh, marketplace evangelism. There are places in the world where you can't knowingly to authorities go and proselyte your neighbor. There are places in the world where you can't do that. But the gospel must still go to those places. So what does the church do? The church takes a portion of your tithe and in the process of working with your tithe and your offering, and don't forget the offering because the offering is a very important part of funding mission projects. So from your mission offering and from the tithe, the focus being on missions, we are able to, to, to now engage in a number of activities. We can build a radio station. We can't go and preach the gospel, but we can have a radio station that beams 24-hour radio programming to places in the world where a preacher cannot go. We can uh, have television, we build television station. I'm happy to tell you that the official uh, television station for the Seventh-day Adventist Church, Hope Channel, is now in many countries of the world where a preacher cannot stand up on the wayside and preach the gospel. We can build schools and offer education. We can build clinics and, and offer health services. We can engage in community projects, some of them taking roads into communities, some of them taking water into communities, but we are doing it as a seven-day Adventist church. We are engaging in areas where we can. We are engaging in the work of evangelism by, by, by reaching our neighbors and friends and telling them that Jesus is coming soon and helping them to be ready for his coming, even as we enter into new fields. 
And so today, on behalf of the leadership of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, from Pastor Ted Wilson to Pastor Ellie Henry to Pastor Kern Tobias to Pastor Leslie Moses, all the leaders of the church at the various levels, I want to express heartfelt thanks to you, each member of the church, for your faithfulness and your commitment to contributing via your tithe and your offering to the advancement of taking the gospel to all the world. At every level, it's happening, but at the level at where you function, your contribution makes a big difference. Thank you so very much for your faithfulness. And may God continue to bless you as you continue to give in your tithe and in your offering for the advancement of the work. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Let us put ourselves, let us put our human resource, let us put our financial resource, our material resource, to work for the advancement of the cause of God. Someday soon, the work will be done, and Jesus will come to take us home. May God bless you as you continue to be faithful to him. Maranatha.